Thank you. Happy New Year to you, Adam. I'm doing very well. All right. It's good to talk to you. A lot to get to with college football. Penn State's got a new coach. They're going to introduce them tomorrow. Bill O'Brien, what's going on at Penn State? I wish I knew. <laughs> um, I mean, it's been a long, strange process, that's for sure. Uh, 25, coach, or 25 schools fired or got rid of changed coaches. 24 of them filled their jobs. Penn State was among the first to fire and is the last to hire, and they're bringing in a guy with you know, very little profile, no head coaching experience, a lot of angry alums out there. Uh, you know, I, think, I think we've seen the damage done to the football program by the fact that they are ending up with Bill O'Brien. That's not to say he's not going to be a success, but, but I think they could have had a much higher profile coach if things had gone about uh, much differently. He's got a tough road ahead of him. He wants to coach with the Patriots throughout the playoffs. They could be playing in the Super Bowl February 5th. That's a few days after signing day. Yeah, you know, and, and that, that's something Charlie Weiss tried at Notre Dame and tried to basically pass that off as an advantage because, you know, you're talking to a Super Bowl coach and that sort of thing, recruits, but they didn't work out that way. They didn't sign a very good class, and I would anticipate the same sort of problems uh, here if the Patriots stay alive that long. And, you know, especially as a first-time head coach, I think you need all the time you can get, and it's just one more complication for Penn State to deal with. Yahoo Sports columnist Pat Forty, our guest here on 97 won the fan. Ohio State's got a new coach uh, since we last spoke. He's on the job full-time now. Urban Meyer is a Buckeye. What do you think? I think it's a great fit. I mean, I think he'll do extremely well. Uh, you know, I think starting with having Braxton Miller and some other good pieces in place, I expect immediate dividends from Ohio State. I think they'll be, uh, I think they'll be very competitive in the Big Ten next year. And going forward, I would imagine he will – He'll obviously, I think, recruit very well in the usual places Ohio State recruits in, in the Midwest, but with his uh, name recognition and ties in the South, I think that he'll be able to go down and, and get some recruits who might otherwise be willing to stay in the SEC. So I think uh, great times ahead for Ohio State. What was, or I guess what is your reaction to the one-year bull ban for the Buckeyes? That was interesting. I, I um, you know, I'm not sure, as I think I put it, I'm not sure the punishment fit the charges but i think it fit the crime uh you know i was surprised i thought they were undercharged by the enforcement staff uh in terms of the the severity of the of the allegations in front of them and i think the committee on infractions basically on its own just said yeah you know what we we want to do more and i think they should have done more so they kind of overstepped what uh, what the charges were and i think Basically, to me, Adam, it was one more misread of the situation by Gene Smith in a long list of them. I don't think he handled anything particularly well throughout the entire one-year saga. I think most of Columbus is with you on that one. We're joined by Yahoo Sports columnist Pat Forty via the Subway Fresh Take Hotline here on 97 won the Fan. Bowl season so far, a lot of good games, a couple clunkers. What has stood out to you about bowl season the most so far? Uh, you know, I think probably performance of the Big 12 has been very good. Uh, performance of the SEC has been probably as good as expected. Uh, Big 10 took its lumps on on New Year's Day and, and the day thereafter. Uh, uh, actually, I guess it was January 2nd when, when uh, those games were played. And, uh, you know, the ACC clunked two BCS games. So from league standpoint, those are the kind of things that stood out. Uh, a lot of offense in a lot of the big bowls, you know, obviously the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, and that's certainly, I don't think, what we're going to see in the BCS championship game. I think that's going to be rock'em, sock'em defense. With the uh, with the NFL playoffs tomorrow and Sunday and the championship game Monday, tonight's game's not getting a lot of pub, but this one could actually be a pretty good game, Arkansas and Kansas State in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, I think so. Two teams that probably were more deserving to go to the Sugar Bowl than the two that went, mm -hmm. um, among, among many others <laughs> yeah. that could have gone to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, yeah, I think I think they're excellent teams. I, I I I think Arkansas, you know, is absolutely a top ten team. You know, they just happen to be in the same division with with LSU and Alabama, uh, and I think they're going to be a maybe even a top five team next year. I expect big things from Arkansas. Kansas State had a great season. Bill Snyder, you know, certainly a top five national coach of the year guy. I think for the work he did this season, so it should be a, a good game. It's just I think it's unfortunate the way the the bowl schedule is now the way they trickle out these games and we do kind of tend to lose them i think there's bowl fatigue i think the nfl playoffs get in the way and we kind of uh, lose momentum with the uh, with the bowl season by now set the scene for us in new orleans you've been there for a couple of days covering the practices and press conferences and whatnot surrounding the championship game what's it like it's interesting uh, for the most part alabama's players are very dull 
Uh, I think that's on purpose. I mm-hmm. don't think they're really dull human beings. I think Nick Saban wants them dull. Uh, quarterback A.J. McCarron's been the only one that's shown much of any personality, and uh, I hope he doesn't have to run wind sprints because of it. Uh, LSU's players a little bit more freewheeling, a little bit more loose, which I think is, again, a reflection of their coach. Uh, it's going to be a wild scene this weekend because you know, I expect the fans to really start rolling in tonight and then even more on Saturday, and there is a Saints home playoff game at the same time. So uh, this is going to be a really crazy weekend in a place that really likes crazy, so it should be a lot of fun. I was going to say, you add a city like New Orleans that may be the biggest party city in the country, then you factor in two SEC teams, one of which isn't far from New Orleans. Both really aren't that far from New Orleans. Monday's just going to be a mob scene. It will be, absolutely. I mean, there's going to be, you know, whatever the Dome holds, 75, 80,000, I bet there's double that in terms of fans from both schools that are going to be here just to be around the scene of the scene. Uh, so it's just going to be, it's going to be a great, great atmosphere. I think uh, by Monday it should be at about at a fever pitch. You know, both schools, the the familiarity has bred a lot of contempt. I think between them, some respect, but also contempt. And it's funny, both programs I think have chips on their shoulders from from the November game. You know, Alabama thinks they let one get away, uh, but LSU saying, "Hey, wait, we won in Tuscaloosa. Why are we now the underdog here? You know, <laughs> why are we getting that level of disrespect?" So. I think that both schools or both teams kind of can't wait to get back at each other. So you mentioned kind of rock 'em sock 'em. Are we going to see something similar to that first meeting? Yeah, I think somebody carrying the football will actually enter the end zone this time. <laughs> okay. you know, I think there's going to be a, a couple of touchdowns, uh, but I do think it's still going to be very much a defense-oriented game. You know, seventeen to ten, seventeen to fourteen, twenty to seventeen, something like that. Uh, you know, quarterbacks are, again, going to be put in very difficult situations, I think. You know, probably a lot of third and longs where they've got to make plays and the, the play calling will probably be fairly conservative because if you make a mistake against these defenses, it's six points the other way. So uh, I, I do expect it to, to be hard-hitting, athletic, fierce, physical, and low scoring. Yahoo Sports columnist Pat Forty, our guest here on 97 won the fan. We'll wrap up on a personal note. Your Denver Broncos against my Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday afternoon for a chance to get bludgeoned in the second round of the playoffs. What do you think? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wish I could feel better about it. It's nice to be back in the playoffs mm-hmm. when you when you backdoor in on a three game losing streak. Sure, you lose to bad teams in the way. It's hard to have a whole lot of confidence about your team. Steelers going to win then. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to think so. I, I, I hate to say it, and I'll, I'll, I'll bet you a six-pack that, that in hopes that I'm wrong, but uh, if the Steelers don't win, and I know they've got injury issues and other problems, but still, come on, if you can't beat Denver at this point, you're not very good. Sure. Well, Pat, enjoy the weekend in New Orleans. I know you will. Looking forward to talking some college hoops with you here before long, but first, have fun at the championship game. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, Neftorius. Thank you.